Well, welcome, Lake Cities, to the first of, I hope, very few meetings on Wednesday nights where we have to do this. Um, I'm missing you. I'm missing being in your presence. Uh, but as you may have heard, I ask all of you to send in songs, scripture readings, a prayer, and uh, we're going to share some of those with you tonight. Uh, he's off camera, but Luke is here, and he's helping me uh, make all of the magic happen behind the scenes. But I wanted to just, for us to just spend a time tonight, time singing together, a time praying together, a time where we hear scripture. And uh, we're going to let some of our youngest members do that for us tonight. So I hope you enjoy this. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kind on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. <laughs> Be strong against the Lord in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God for you and take the stand from the devil's chase. Put on the belt of truth. Put the Lord on your waist, and the blessed put of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the lightness that comes from the gospel of peace. Feel seals of faith, which is the unit strength of us, the flaming arrows from the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Be alert, and keep on praying for all the saints. He also for me, when I also open my mouth, for having given me, that I may fearlessly know the mystery of the gospel of peace. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in clean pastures. He leads me in dry quiet waters. He restores my soul. Me in paths of righteousness, and his name's sake. He will walk through the valley of self death. I fear no evil, but with me in right staff. They comfort me. He will prepare a table before me, and the presence of my enemies. You know, if my hand of oil and my cup overflows, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll live in the house of the Lord forever. Wasn't that awesome? It's hard to believe, but just a short week ago, my family was on spring break. We spent a wonderful week up in Branson, Missouri, enjoying the outdoors, playing, just having a great time. To make a long story really short, we had to start that, uh, that journey up in Kansas City, Missouri. And it was just the boys and I, just Jackson and Parker. We found ourselves down at the Union Center, and it's a place where the trains used to all come together. And inside of Union Center, they have what's called the Museum of Illusions. And what you will see there will amaze and spellbound you. Here's a few pictures It appears that Parker has no head, but he does. Can I talk over these? Ah, here's large Parker and small Jackson. Now, it might surprise you to know that there is no chair in this. This is a complete optical illusion. 
one that makes Jackson look huge and Parker look small, and it makes Parker look like he's sitting in a chair that does not exist. This was a kaleidoscope illusion where Jackson stood on one side of a long tube of mirrors and I stood on the other. And here we are in a whole room full of mirrors where we can see an infinite number uh, of each of us and uh, unfortunately every side, even if you didn't want to see it. You might recognize some of these pictures. They're called forced perspective. And because we live in a three-dimensional world but take pictures in two dimensions, uh, these are just tricks of the eye. Uh, anybody who's ever gone fishing knows that if you hold that fish closer to the camera, it looks huge. And by the way, Tim Lyons, you're not fooling anybody. Or maybe you've seen people at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This is, I think, one of the more interesting ones. You see a lot of people acting like they're actually holding it up. But again, that's just a trick of the mind. What you're seeing isn't actually what's going on in reality. So tonight I want to talk about perspective. Isn't that something we are in desperate need of right now? Right now, the news, all, all of the things that you're reading on social media are probably making your heart a little bit anxious. And what I want to remind you is that we've got to get a good perspective, not just a good perspective, but a Christian perspective on the way we're interpreting these things. I want you to hear tonight uh, this central passage. This is from 2 Corinthians 5, and we'll start in verse 7. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it's plain to your conscience. We're not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it's for the sake of God. If we're in our right mind, it's for you. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though once we regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. I want to encourage you in the weeks and months that are ahead of us to not take a worldly view of things, but instead to look at this world, to look at this crisis, to look at all that we're enduring and going through, through a much larger, longer perspective. If we can put these events and these struggles and these hardships into a perspective, it's going to help us endure. And it's going to help us be a witness for those who are enduring with us. There's a phrase that I love to use and I love to hear. When someone's struggling, I often hear the phrase, this is only a season. Let's remind ourselves that we're in for a rough season ahead, but it's only a season. I'm looking forward to, I don't know how and when we'll actually celebrate Easter this year. I wonder if we don't move it until a time when we can all embrace each other and get together and, uh, and sing and pray and thank God for all that he's done. But I'm imagining an Easter celebration where we proclaim again that the tomb is empty, that God is the God over death, that God is the God who conquers. So let's talk a little bit more about perspective. I want you to think about how you see Jesus and how the world might have seen Jesus. There's a really famous, you could call it a poem, it's a writing, it's uh, not attributed to anyone, but I want you to hear it tonight uh, as you just imagine, close your eyes or look at this picture and imagine what the world sees when they see Christ. Here is a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He did manual labor jobs until he was 30 and then for three years was an itinerant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did one of those things 
that usually accompanies greatness. He had no credentials but himself. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed on a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executors gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth, his coat. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Now listen to this. Nineteen long centuries have come and gone, and today he is the centerpiece of the human race and the leader of the column of progress. I am far within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that were ever built, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as had that one solitary life. It's amazing to think about who Jesus is through the eyes of the world. Some would call him a failure or a liar or a manipulator, a charlatan. We call him Lord, and we know that through the mockery of his trial, through the bloodiness of his death, through the, the, the stain of all that was put upon him that wasn't his to carry, we know that that gives us freedom. So our perspective is important when we think about how we view God, about how we see him. But there's another perspective I want you to think about tonight, and it's how God sees you. What does God see when he looks at you. I found this piece years ago. I don't remember now who wrote it. It's not me, and I couldn't find it online who the author is, but she writes beautifully. And so would you listen to these words? There are times when no matter how hard we try, we feel unable to love ourselves. In such times, we feel it's so much easier to love other people. After all, they're not with us 24 hours in a day. We don't see all their weaknesses. We don't live with their regrets. And we're not the ones who have to carry their hurts. In such times, we feel overwhelmed. We don't have enough strength to accept this person we see in the mirror every day. We don't have enough love to love her. We don't have enough strength to uplift her when she couldn't believe in herself anymore. During such times, I've known of a way to help you continue improving your relationship with yourself. And that way is to see yourself through God's own eyes. In God's eyes, there is no judgment. There's only acceptance. In God's eyes, there's no pain too hard to bear, nor weaknesses too weak to be overcome by his insurmountable strength. God can embrace us wholeheartedly, opening us up, yet sustaining us and healing us at the same time. God sees all our potentials. God sees our light when all that we can see are shadows. God sees this person who falls, but who has the power to get up again and again. God sees this person who gets hurt, but does not become hard or bitter, only softer, more resilient to change. God sees you. God cherishes you. God loves you more than anyone could love you as you really are. I hope tonight we can gain a better perspective on how we see these events in the world, on how we look to God and at God in these times. And then if we can use our imaginations a bit to imagine what God sees when he looks at us, suffering, confused, worried, bored, ready to see our friends again. God sees all of that and he knows us and he loves us and he takes care of us. Down in the comments, you'll find a playlist uh, for some worship music that Chet uh, especially picked out for us tonight. Uh, we can't show those on Facebook Live, but we can ask you to sit at home and enjoy those, sing out, enjoy some worship time together. And then also in the comments, would you leave a prayer request and something that we can pray for, even if it's somebody? Uh, it can be something simple, but let us know that you are watching and let us know that we can be praying for you and with you. I love you. I miss you. Ready to see you again. God bless.